Hello and welcome back to EV Swap. I'm Jimmy and I'm a car enthusiast. I love cars of all types, but here at EV Swap, we take cars that are gas and make them electric. All right, we've got some updates on the Volkswagen Bug today. So I've gotten a lot done on basically all the wiring in the car and getting ready to where we can finally install the batteries themselves. So here's the front battery box. And uh, this is the BMS that we're using, the Thunderstruck Motors BMSC. And then there's a satellite unit that'll go in the back, the rear pack. So these units have these uh, nicely made wires that go to the uh, Tesla modules and that they're already pinned out and ready to go. So that's awesome. Um, then there's a couple CAN bus lines. There's a CAN and then there's IPO IMO, if you can see that there in the orange and yellow. And that wire goes to the rear battery box to the BMS unit in the rear. And then the BMS unit in the rear has the same cell taps to the Tesla modules. And then it just needs the 12 volt and ground to power it all. Um, I'm kind of spacing this out, getting ready to kind of finalizing where everything's gonna go. So those wires from the BMS go to this nice waterproof plug. And there's a little USB uh, adapter here, which goes um, to the BMS to program the unit. Uh, we've got the high voltage fuse in here. I'm kind of figuring out where the high voltage wiring is gonna go. So it comes into the box through this plug right here. It'll go through this gap, go to the cells. One will go through the fuse and then um, the voltage will go back out through there. Then one wire from one high voltage wire from the front box will go to the rear box. And then one high voltage wire will go straight to the uh, contactor box, the most negative. And then out of the rear box will be the most positive wire and the wire that comes back to this box. So it's got five Tesla Model S modules. Uh, all five of them will be in series. And uh, I think that'll get us about 100, 120 volts and about 19 kilowatt hours, I think. So that's kind of the battery update. Um, up under the front hood where the battery comes, you can see the high voltage cable that I've got already cut now and labeled up to go there. And then the BMS wire for uh, plugging in the BMS. So then the box will go on top here and then the modules will go inside and I'll finish up all the wiring. But I added these grommets, uh, nice waterproof grommets to protect the wires as they pass through the firewalls and got them siliconed up nice and waterproof there. And then over the top will be this conduit here. So this will go over the top of all the high voltage wires to keep it nice and protected. And then uh, judicious use of electrical tape on top of that. So the wires will be very well protected. Um, and it should all be safe and reliable for years and years to come. If we go inside the beetle, you can see where I've got the high voltage wires. So they come through the firewall there. Uh, these will all be tucked up and secured against the uh, tunnel here. And then the carpet will go over the top and you won't even be able to see them. Um, you can see this is the, the BMS wires and then the positive and negative from the main battery pack. So they come through the uh, back wall here. Again, two more grommets. And then remember one of these wires will come up into this area where the rear battery box will be. So that's the BMS wiring there and then the main high voltage wires. And they're of course also sealed up and uh, protected. So this was the best way I thought to run the wires through the car. Um, uh, I would have rather run them through this tunnel, but the way that these Volkswagens are built, I'd have to cut um, either drill out all the spot welds on the panel on the bottom or cut holes in this tunnel and I decided that it was better to run the wires through these grommets um, than to do that. And then this way also they'll be accessible and uh, so any upgrades that need to be done or changes um, you won't have to cut and weld to fix that stuff. And underneath we've got the high voltage cables and this is the uh, wire that goes to the front BMS and the battery box wires go up there um, and then the two wires go to the uh, contactor box from there and I'll get these all tied up and mounted nice and tightly to the uh, undercarriage there and then everything's going to be covered in conduit like uh, some tubing sleeve on all this high voltage wire I'll probably tuck this up 
uh, something like that and just all protected um, safe and secure because it's going to be underneath the vehicle so you know rocks mud snow whatever is going to be going on under here so i want to make sure all those high voltage lines all the low voltage wires everything is really waterproof and uh, protected from the elements so uh, that's kind of what's going on underneath so the rear end uh, it's kind of the last it's kind of the same as the last way you saw it but i've got a few more wires hooked in so uh, the main high voltage wires coming out of the contactor box to the motor controller are here i've got those all done uh, i've got all of the uh, charger and the dc dc wired in and uh, the j1772 the charge port is all wired in now to the contactor box and then behind here if i can pull this out of the way if you can see back there i've got a ground uh, terminal point and then a relay box or fuse box there um, and then all this low voltage wiring i'm going to put in conduit and get it all taped up and protected um, and make it look really nice i want to manage all this wiring so that it doesn't look like a rat's nest but it actually looks pretty good uh, i'm going to wait until the end to do that because from my experience if you do that make it look all nice before you do a final systems check and check everything out Ine inevitably you're gonna have to pull that tape off pull the conduit off and you know troubleshoot diagnose some things trace some wires um, so i'm gonna wait until the very end to do that just because of my past experience doing it more than one time so um, that's kind of how it is here i've got some uh, elect liquid electrical tape that i covered up these um, connections to the controller to the motor the high voltage connections and you can see the bare metal here i'm going to coat these as well with that liquid electrical tape i think i mean it's not you don't need to do that i see tons and tons of conversions where that's not done but just in the back of my mind i just think it's a good idea um maybe this thing's powered up like when this thing's powered up and running these two wires are going to have high voltage live on them so you don't want to accidentally drop a screwdriver on there you don't want somebody to touch it just to show it off or something and and get a shock so i'm going to cover those with the liquid electrical tape and uh maybe a heavier duty coating to go on top of that just to protect it but i think that's kind of an important thing to do is cover up those terminals the ones in here are okay because the box is going to have a lid that'll go on to seal all that stuff off um, but yeah definitely keeping that in mind the safety aspect of uh, this vehicle and then this is the radiator i think i showed it i'm going to have it uh, at an angle like this above everything and i think that'll look really cool when you open up the hood so that kind of does it on the updates on the volkswagen on the tacoma um, i got some cool stuff from the owner he sent me a new set of headlights so uh, headlights and LED turn signals and um, some new lights for the front end. And then we got in here are some uh, LED lights, which we're gonna put in the bed here so that when he's working back here at night, he'll have a nice lit up bed. And also he sent a Toyota emblem, which lights up with an LED. So I'm gonna wire that in the same way I did on Dave's Frontier so that when the vehicle is on, that gauge will light up and also when it's plugged into charge that little gauge will light up which i think will look really cool so last thing on the tacoma is we got in a toto head unit in so this is like an android touch screen radio head unit type device so this is the latest x10 model um, so it's just a, like you can see it's a really clean touch screen um, it's got the protective film on there right now but um, you've got a few buttons on the side to turn it on, change volume, things like that. But mostly it's a touchscreen Android interface. So uh, it wires into the radio just like any other radio, um, tape deck, CD player, you know, just normal. It'll go here where the uh, stock radio is. It'll fit right in there. It should look cool. And uh, so the benefit of using an android head unit like this is that we can connect to uh, the obd of the nissan leaf system with a little bluetooth module and what that does is it allows you to use the leaf spy app 
which will show you all the information you could ever want uh, to do with your EV conversion. So your battery percentage, your battery health, state of charge, the power discharge and charge uh, numbers, the raw kilowatts. So you can see how much power your motor is pulling when you're accelerating, your steady state power, you can see how much it charges or regens. Uh, in kilowatts and it just tells you all sorts of things if there's any DTCs or error codes that come up you can scan the modules and see what the error codes are for so it's just a really great tool to have um, with a Nissan Leaf based EV conversion like this I think um, it just answers so many questions about uh, how much power you're using and it can help you diagnose things it can tell you the battery temperatures and everything so you can just optimize your driving experience so that's cool we'll get that installed um, I've had some delays with the uh, machining work needed for the coupler from the motor to the transmission. So um, that's actually still sitting on the floor in there. I need to get that coupler. Uh, there's just been delays with the machinist, but I think he's going to get to it soon and I should have that back ASAP. And uh, we're going to get the battery 3D scanned. We should be doing that within the next couple days. Um, and once we 3D scan the battery, we can actually start manufacturing some battery boxes for this thing. So there's still a lot to do on this truck, but we're working through it. It's just unfortunately there's been a couple delays um, with things like the machining, which I need to move forward with the other parts. So, but we, if you saw the last video on this truck, we tested the motor, the battery, the charger, everything, and it all works, it func functions flawlessly. So that's really great. We can go confident into the next steps and get this truck finished out. So that kind of does it for this week's updates at EV Swap. Thanks again for watching. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends and family if you think that somebody you know would enjoy this content. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching.